I can have everybody's attention. Welcome to the memorial for Joyce Stark. I probably won't make it through this without crying, but I am the third born of Vernon Joyce. I don't recognize everyone here, so I doubt everybody knows who I am. I am Dina, uh, the third from Debbie. Wave your hand, Debbie. David, Dina, and Danny are the four children of Vernon Joyce. Oh, cool. I thank you everyone for honoring mom for coming out today. It's quite remarkable how everyone has turned out. In case you didn't know, mom was born on September 28, 1937. She died February 5th, 2021. She was 83 years young. I never thought of her as an old woman, ever, because she dressed like I am today in sparkles all the time. <laughs> this is in honor of her. She was born in Iowa on a farm. She did a lot of farm work. She loved being outdoors, but she hated dirt. I don't know if anybody knew that, but she really literally hated dirt in her house especially. She was a meticulous cleaner. She did not want to come to the lake, oh, years ago. She just abhorred the idea of coming up here and getting dirt in her coach. We convinced her, my husband Randy and I convinced her to come up here one time telling her she could clean the sand out of her coach if she really had to, but she got hooked. And it was several years later that she and, she and dad ended up becoming the camp hosts and parking here for 11 straight years. Wow. And she loved it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely loved it. She loved it for many reasons. Of course, the views that you get up here, the social aspect of being able to visit with all of you wonderful people, and the idea that maybe kids and grandkids would show up on the weekends because we all love the lake too. So she had lots of reasons to stay here and, and be with Dad all the time. I guess I didn't point Dad out. Dad, do you want to wave? <laughs> Burn? <laughs> wave! <laughs> wave. <laughs> Dad is doing quite well. It's quite hard, I'm sure everybody would know, after 63 years of marriage. But uh, one stepping stone at a time, one thing leads to another and happiness returns. I guess she enjoyed all of this so much. She enjoyed all of you guys so much. And this is such an honor, what you have done here today, to honor them with this bench and with the memory of her. I thank you from the deepest part of my heart. All my siblings do too. We think this is just awesome. She would have absolutely loved it. I can't wait to see it in person. I've only seen pictures of it. We'll move on and I'm gonna, my mom also liked uh, my son, Corey, and his wife, our daughter-in-law, Malia. They're singing, and they are going to sing a song now for Grandma that they sang when she was at home and she really, really liked. So they're going to come and sing a song. In the Garden. In the Garden is the name of it. An old hymn. I'm sure most of you will recognize it. My husband, Randy, will be on the guitar.
Next on the agenda is, I call him the lake pastor. Uh, Mom called him her other son. So without further ado, Randy Staub yeah. to give us a little message. Thank you, Tina. <coughs> other son is an understatement. <laughs> She had two son-in-laws named Randy. <laughs> and then I came along and I was her other Randy. <laughs> Joyce was so wonderful. And you know, just getting to know her, whenever I do a message at the lake, she loved it when I shared the gospel. Just shared the gospel in my own unique, quirky way. But uh, I know that if Joyce was here today, no pun intended, but she would want us to rejoice and not be sad. Because I know Joyce knows what's going on now. And she probably thought of two things to say. Or if she'd come, well, there's probably two things she said when she crossed over into the kingdom. She said, oh, now I get it. Because Joyce didn't have all knowledge down here, but she does now. And she's rejoicing because she has knowledge. But knowledge didn't get her to heaven. And Joyce also said, Oh, you were right, God. It was true. Because Joyce knows that God told the truth because she's now spending eternity in the kingdom. And so even though Joyce down here had doubt, her doubt didn't keep her from heaven. There's only one thing that got her to heaven. And that was the only thing that gets any of us to heaven. Because when we were born, we were born of an ancestor who sinned. And that would be Adam. So we were born with sin. And nobody could ever, and we've tried, because we've got many different religions in the world, we've tried so hard to be good enough. Because something deep inside of us says we got to be good. And that is the truth. But the problem is we have to be perfect. And we can't do it. Because I've tried all my life and I'm not even close. But Joyce knows now that she didn't have to be perfect. But she trusted in someone who was perfect. Jesus Christ. Who God brought to this earth. Because God wanted us to spend eternity with him. And with Joyce. He brought his son down here on this earth. And most of you know this story. To die for the sins of all of us. And to present us. Not that we're perfect now. But to present us perfect in God's sight. So that we can join Joyce in heaven. That is what they call the gospel. And the gospel means good news. That's good news. I, I'm telling you, that is good news. I need a God who would present that kind of good news to me. I know that. We all need that kind of good news. We live in a world today that has really gone kind of wacky. But it really shouldn't be a surprise because if we read in Scripture, the same God who died for our sins also allowed Scripture to preserve it throughout the years. And He predicted that this would happen of what's coming. Let me tell you a little little something. I'm, I'm going to branch off here and just tell you that for the first time in, my, time in my life, I'm almost 60 years old, for the first time in my life, I called my wife the other day and I says, I'm going to invest in a stock. Never been in the stock market before, but I'm going to invest in a stock. And I remember calling her on the phone and saying, hey, listen, this thing's going up. We need to get in now because this is urgent. And so I got in. Who cares about that stock? That's not that important. But I realized how time was passing, and I was watching that little graph go up. And time's passing in our lives, and it goes very quickly. And we need to treat our salvation just like that stock. We need to get in now, because we never know when we're going to go down. It's really urgent, and I know that Joyce right now would want to come down here and say, Guys, it's wonderful here. Christ died for our sins, and we need to trust in Him. And let me tell you, the gospel is a good news 
But I want to tell you a few things that the gospel is not. It's really important to know this. The, not, the gospel is not how good we can do. Because we just talked about it a little bit ago, we can't be good enough. The gospel is not what church we joined. The gospel is not how nice we can be to other people. Because guess what? We're going to fall short of any of those standards. And that's why Christ had to come down and give his life on this earth. But that's how much he loved us. He came down, lived the perfect life, and it was the plan all along. When Adam sinned, God put in place his plan immediately to save people from their sin. And he sacrificed his own son. What do we have to do? Well, we don't just have to believe it, even though the scripture may say you have to believe it. That's true, but there's a lot of things we believe, but it doesn't affect us. We have to receive it. I can believe my friend gave me a great gift, but unless I receive it, open it up, and I use it, I haven't really got the gift. And that's what I want to let people know, that it don't matter if you're attending this or that, and you're nice to people, you should be. But that's where we all fall short because God's standard is perfection. But we need to receive His Son for the gift of eternal life. His Son and what He did on the cross. Here, here's why. Because when we pass from this life to the next life as Joyce did, Joyce can only look and say, Thank you, God. You get all the glory. We get none because we're not God. God gets all the glory. And if we ever, if we think we're going to come in and say, it's because you died on the cross and I were wrong. So I'm telling you, if you want peace in your heart and you want to know you have salvation, get rid of all the other stuff and trust in Christ and in Christ alone. Because He should get all the glory. All of it. All of it. And that, I, I don't care what background you come from, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. No one. That's the gospel truth. And so that's what I needed to present to you. That's what I know Joyce would want you to know. But the, the, probably the biggest message here is, because we all know the gospel, the biggest message is, it's urgent, guys. It's urgent. Don't put it off. Don't put it off a, a moment. If and, and just to leave you with, if you know, I, I want you to go away and leave, and I, I want you to remember Joyce, because but she wants you to remember this, because she wants you to rejoin Joyce. She wants you to rejoice. When, I want you to think about this, but don't. Don't wait too long. I want you to go to bed at night when you lay down somewhere where no one's at and think about what this gospel message and ask yourself, have I truly laid everything else aside and only trusted in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? That's when you will have peace in your heart. That's when the Holy Spirit will truly begin to be in your life and begin to lead and guide you and you'll have peace. It's, it's, it's just... just think about this and take this with you this message because no matter what we do today what we're talking about right now is the most important of all of it please do that for me and I'm sorry do that for Joyce yeah well Joyce wants you to do that for her because she wants to see she wants to spend that time with you together so that's how we can honor Joyce right there we can honor Joyce but it says rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And that's how we can rejoice in the Lord. And that's all I have for you. It's, it was quick, uh, but that's it. I just want to do that. I needed to share that with you. Okay. And now we have a song to end. There you go. Hopefully I will be joined by the most of Randy and my family. The number one Randy, by the way. My sister married the Randy second. <laughs> Randy Saul was third, so I just thought to point that out. Anybody who wants to join us is welcome to join us. I, most, most people know the doxology, but this is one thing that we did as a family. Uh, 
at meal times or at different times, so we just thought we would end with this. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Twenty-seven people or donations, families that donate to this bench again. I thank you so much. Twenty-seven people that love my mother enough to do this. Terry Wagner, thank you so much. Engagers, <laughs> engagers were involved. I talked to Terry most of the time. Thank you for orchestrating all this and getting it all together. So, would you please unveil Mom's bench? Thank you, Haley. Like, what are you doing? He's like, 